What's up folks, Mike here at When and Watches. Welcome to the video and today we're going to be taking a look at this Amiga uh, military watch from the Second World War. Now there were 12 watches produced uh, by various brands including Amiga, Sima, Vertex, uh, Jaeger, Lacoutre, just to name a few. And they were called the Dirty Dozen. I'm not entirely sure where that nickname comes from but I'm sure a Google search will tell you much more than I ever could. Uh, but this is the Amiga version uh, which is a steel cased uh, pilot style watch with uh, fixed wire lugs, uh, a black dial, uh, with simple minute track, Arabic numerals, uh, radium loom on uh, both the, the dial and the, the uh, large pilot style hands. And you got the uh, case, case back there etched with uh, WWW and the crow's foot. And inside we're going to find a nickel plated uh, caliber 30T2 movement uh, from Amiga. Now most of Amiga movements are known for their uh, orangey coppery coloured plating but they did a lot of their early movements in a nickel plate and that's what this one is. It is unfortunately a non-shock protected movement um, and these were quite common um, to be repaired back in the day. I, uh, I know a watchmaker that used to fix a lot of these, 30 of these at a time in a week um, and quite often the balance would be broken because they are uh, not shock protected. I think later versions did become uh, shock protected uh, but this one isn't. So first thing we do is uh, release all the power from the, the mainspring and uh, we're going to disassemble the movement and get the uh, the dial hands off once we take it out of the case. So we're just going to undo or loosen the setting bolt um, on this movement. The setting bolt is, is not held in place by the bridge plate so be careful not to uh, undo it fully because it will just come out and fall out on this particular movement. It's going to replace the, uh, the stem back into the movement before we remove the hands. Now the trick with um, replacing the stem in this movement is to put enough pressure on the setting bolt that it pushes the, the setting lever on the other side out of the way so that you can put the stem in. But sometimes it doesn't always want to uh, to play ball, but we get there in the end. So you can see the large sword style hour hand and the large minute hand filled with uh, radium. Although I'm not entirely sure it is radium because it looks like the loom on the hands has been changed at some point. But you should always take care when dealing with um, older watches like this that might have radium loom is they will still have uh, some of their radioactivity so you should never remove that loom and um, blow the dust all over the place because it can still have um, issues with regards to your health. <clears throat> so we can use the uh, hand levers there to lift off those hands. Always take great care when uh, removing the hands. The tweezers I'm using have uh, mirror polished uh, tips so as not to scratch or damage the dial or the hands. And then we can remove the, the sub dial hand as well. Now in order to remove the dial there are two screws on the, the side of the movement plate and we loosen those off so that we can remove the dial and then we'll tighten them back down uh, just before the movement uh, goes into the cleaner to make sure that they don't uh, unscrew themselves whilst they're in the cleaner because that does quite uh, happen quite often um, with the movement screws as small as this they tend to move out of the way and move out of the plate and get lost somewhere in the basket as the uh, the movement parts are all being cleaned so I have a tendency to screw them back down to make sure that they don't get lost as you saw there just using a small screwdriver to just help the dial off uh, the off the movement. Sometimes they don't want to come off super easy, so you just give it a little helping hand. I'm going to wrap the the dial in a piece of acid-free paper just to make sure it's uh, protected whilst it's in the uh, the cleaning tray. Don't want to 
to get any uh, scratches or dust on the dial. So moving on with the disassembly, we're going to start off with the hour wheel and then we're going to remove the cannon pinion using the cannon pinion uh, removal tool. This is an American cannon pinion tool. There is a version Swiss one, um, but it's limited to the size of cannon pinion you can remove. This American one has been in my workshop for well over 10 years and it's, it's been great. I used it on nearly every single watch. Um, not sure if you can get them anymore, but there might be some on eBay. A really good tool. And then we're going to secure the movement in the uh, adjustable movement holder. We've already powered down the movement, so one of the first things we're going to do is uh, to remove the balance. The balance is held on by a single screw. worth mentioning here that uh, whenever you're removing a balance uh, from a watch once you've managed to uh, remove the screw and lift the cock off the main plate itself is to always be careful and try and angle the balance out at a certain angle so that the hairspring comes out from underneath the center wheel because sometimes you can catch the hairspring on the teeth of the center wheel and end up bending the hairspring so always be very careful especially with breguet springs uh, not to catch it on that center wheel. So we can gently place the, the balance in the soft uh, foam insert there which can go into the movement tray and then we can move on to removing uh, the pallets. Now although I've already removed some of the power or all of the power from the mainspring there might be a little teeny bit of residual power uh, still left in the movement uh, once these pallets are removed and you'll see uh, the wheels move if that is the case um, and it is quite often the case that there is a little bit of residual power and quite often as soon as you notice the wheels like that start to move is just to stop and allow that teeny little power to to move out of the way don't try and grab the pallet straight away just let the power uh, whatever little power is left dissipate from the movement and that way you'll avoid chipping the uh, pallet stones pallet's got a little bit sticky there in the pallet cock if you ever do find that the, the pallets are stuck in the pallet cock and they don't want to come out easily, just allow them to soak in a little bit of essence before you try to remove them. You don't want to force uh, the pallets out of the jewel hole. Uh, you just want a bit of essence to loosen up any hard or grimy oils that are keeping it in place. So we're going to remove the ratchet wheel and the crown wheel because we're going to remove the, the barrel bridge uh, first. Now onto the crown wheel with two small screws, securing that uh, crown cap in place. remove the uh, the crown wheel and the crown wheel core getting a little bit stuck there with some old oils but we lift that up separated them they can go into the, uh, the cleaning basket and now we can remove the barrel bridge held on by these uh, three screws Whenever disassembling a movement um, at all times, although you can't actually see it, at all the times that you're disassembling or reassembling a movement, you're always looking uh, all over the place of the movement, all over the different parts of the movement as you disassemble them just to check for any damage or wear. Um, you can't see me looking at these parts, but I am actually looking for those kind of things there. So I'm looking for a bit of wear there in the uh, barrel hole to make sure there's no uh, uneven wear. Same with the center hole there. Just checking to make sure there's no uneven wear on those parts. So now we're going to remove the mainspring barrel. Well, I dare say the mainspring in that uh, in that barrel is probably the original 
or a very early mainspring so we'll, we'll be replacing that mainspring uh, during this service and uh, now we're going to remove the train wheel bridge held in place by two screws and again take uh, extra special care when removing a train bridge because uh, there's a lot of very fine pivots um, that are at risk of uh, getting broken and sometimes these wheels can get stuck in the train bridge if the oil has become really old it becomes quite sticky and quite hard uh, so always lift the plate uh, at the indicated places on the plate there are little cutouts at the side of the, uh, the movement so that you can lift up the plate that plate came off no problem at all quick check of the jaw holes again and then we can move on to removing the train wheels so we're going to start with the, uh, the center wheel we'll go on to the third wheel and it looks like the fourth wheel is actually stuck a little with a little bit of uh, old oil is keeping that wheel in place don't want to force it again so a little later on uh, out of shot I actually add a little bit of lubrication to that wheel uh, so that it comes out a little more easily so we'll move on to the escape wheel and uh, get that out of the way in the meantime after adding some oil and giving the wheel a couple of turns it should now be loose enough for it to uh, come out and out it pops and that'll be fine once it's gone through the cleaner so we're going to flip the uh, plate over shortly and as I said I'm going to tuck down those dial screws again we don't want them coming loose in the basket so we're going to tuck them down again and then we're going to flip it over and remove the, uh, the rest of the keyless works and then we're going to finish off by re-adding re or refitting the balance wheel um, as that is probably the safest way that you can clean a balance uh, is by re-adding it to the main plate before putting it in the cleaner so we loosen off the screw that's holding the setting lever spring um, and we then fully remove the screw uh, once we've removed the tension from that spring otherwise it has a tendency to ping off into the distance then we remove the uh, the minute wheel uh, the setting wheel and then we're going to move on to the yoke spring and we're going to release tension from the yoke spring um, and whenever you're doing this it's uh, it's always best to use a piece of uh, pegwood or a stick like this this is a version pressure stick and you can just hold the spring in place whilst you release the tension and that way the spring is not likely to fly off into the distance and with the spring gone we can then safely remove the yoke and then we can remove the plate to get rid of the setting lever and the setting bolt now it's quite unique to this movement the setting bolt is actually just a straight bolt so it's not actually secured in place by the plate above it um, so whenever you're removing or refitting the stem uh, you only have to loosen it slightly otherwise it'll come all the way out a little bit of dirt and grime on that setting lever there but there's no uh, rust or damage so it looks to be good then we can remove the crown and stem and there's the, uh, the clutch wheel making a run for it and the winding pinion and those are all the parts that are going into their various cleaning baskets and as we can see there's a little bit of rust there on that stem but that'll help uh, be cleaned off a bit more once it's gone through the cleaner so now we're going to refit the balance assembly to the plate and this is the best way to make sure that the uh, balance doesn't get broken during the cleaning process um, this one has fixed jewels so it's not a shock protected uh, movement so the jewels are just left in place if it was a shock protected movement you could actually remove the jewels uh, and wash them separately whilst the balance was also attached to the plate but in this particular instance uh, the jewels are going to be independently cleaned after they've come out of the cleaning machine um, so we don't need to do that we can just fit the, uh, the balance in place just gently tucking down the balance cock there for fitting the screw always take care when refitting the balance to make sure that you're not going to break any pivots always check check and recheck that the balance can swing freely before you fully screw down that screw so there we go give it a quick shake to make sure the balance can move 
whilst we tighten it down and the balance is free to move there. So that's ready to go into the cleaning basket and uh, into the cleaner. And last but not least is the mainspring barrel. And the mainspring is going to be replaced uh, on this particular watch. Don't know how old this mainspring is, but I'm pretty sure that it's uh, seen better days. And it'll be nice to have a nice, fresh, new mainspring in there. Make sure the watch has got a nice reserve. So we're taking out the barrel spring, uh, mainspring arbor. No, all the parts are now in the cleaner, cleaning baskets and uh, ready to go. Well, should I say they're in the cleaning tray, ready to be put into the basket. So that's the watch completely broken down. And um, as I said, all these parts will go into the cleaning basket. And uh, once they're cleaned, they'll come out and get ready to get reassembled. So be sure to come back and check um, for the second part of the video where we go through the reassembly of uh, this movement.